thermal effects due to non-spherical nuclei. The nuclei of atoms in a certain solid have spin 1. According to quantum theory, each nucleus therefore can be in any one of three quantum uh, states labeled by the quantum number m, 1, 0, minus 1. This quantum number measures the projection of the nuclear spin along a crystal axis of the solid. Since the electric charge distribution in the nucleus is not spherically symmetrical, but ellipsoidal, the energy of a nucleus depends on its spin orientation with respect to the non-uniform internal electric field existing at its location. Thus, a nucleus has the same energy, E is equal to epsilon, in state m equals 1 and m equals minus 1, and energy E is equal to 0 in m equals 0. Find an expression as a function of the absolute temperature of the nuclear contribution to the mean internal energy per mole of the solid. So I'm going to start out by writing the partition function. The partition function is sum over r e to the minus beta epsilon r and I have energy 0 for m equals uh, 0 state I have energy epsilon for m equals 1 state and I have energy epsilon for m equals minus 1 state so therefore this is 1 plus 2 e to the minus beta epsilon now the mean energy uh, per nucleus will be given by minus del ln z del beta and the total mean energy for one mole of the solid will be given by Avogadro's number multiplied with uh, epsilon bar. So uh, let's calculate this del ln z del beta. So epsilon bar is minus 1 over z del z del beta. So what is del z del beta? Let's start out with this. It's going to be minus 2 epsilon e to the minus beta epsilon. Therefore, we will find that the uh, mean energy epsilon bar will be minus 2 epsilon e to the minus beta epsilon divided by uh, z, uh, which is 1 plus 2 e to the minus beta epsilon and then we have a minus sign here so therefore that minus sign will get rid of this minus sign so my answer for epsilon bar will be like this and in order to simplify uh, sorry it gets rid of this minus sign up front not the minus sign in the exponential now i can multiply the top and bottom with e to the plus beta epsilon uh, to simplify things a little bit. So the mean energy per uh, nucleus I can write as 2 epsilon 2 epsilon divided by 2 plus e to the beta epsilon and for the total mean energy uh, per mole, I will have 2 Avogadro's number times epsilon divided by 2 plus e to the epsilon over kT. So this would be the total mean energy per mole. So this is per mole because I have used Avogadro's number. Now in part B, uh, the molar specific heat will be given by del E bar del T uh, when all the external parameters are kept uh, constant. Since I have uh, found the energy per mole, the molar specific heat I will get, uh, the heat capacity I calculate using this E bar will also be uh, for one mole. So therefore, I just need to take the derivative of this with respect to temperature. So it's going to be equal to uh, del E bar del beta del beta del T. So this will be 2 Na epsilon 
minus 1 over kt square that is del beta del t multiplied by uh, the derivative with respect to beta of 2 plus e to the beta epsilon to the power minus 1. So I can see that the uh, derivative with respect to beta will give me another minus sign here. So this will be 2 and a epsilon divided by k t squared. Uh, the minus 1 will become uh, will come up front and get rid of the minus sign uh, there and then the derivative with respect to beta gives me uh, an epsilon e to the beta epsilon and then I have 2 plus e to the beta epsilon to the power minus 2 so uh, therefore my molar specific heat will become 2 epsilon square Avogadro's number divided by k uh, t square e to the epsilon over k t divided by 2 plus e to the epsilon over k t squared. So this is the heat capacity of one mole which is a molar specific heat. So once again this Na is Avogadro's number 6.02 10 to 23. Now uh, what happens to this uh, heat capacity as t goes to infinity and uh, t goes to zero? So if I look at the limit as t goes to infinity uh, I will have uh, beta becoming zero so uh, therefore my molar specific heat will uh, become 2 epsilon square and a divided by kt square the exponential will be uh, 1 divided by uh, 2 plus 1 uh, 3 squared so this will become uh, 2 epsilon squared Avogadro's number divided by kt squared multiplied with 9. So I can see that this uh, uh, functional dependence is 1 over t squared as t goes to infinity. It's actually approaching 0 but it's approaching as 1 over t squared. And as t goes to 0 or beta goes to infinity, what happens to the uh, molar specific heat it goes as 2 epsilon square Avogadro's number divided by kt squared and uh, when beta goes to infinity it will be much greater than uh, e to the epsilon beta epsilon will be much greater than 2 so we can neglect 2 in the denominator so it will become e to the epsilon uh, over kt divided by e to the 2 epsilon over uh, kt since in this limit e to the beta epsilon is much greater than uh, 2 so uh, therefore I find that this is 2 epsilon square Avogadro's number over kt square e to the minus epsilon over kt uh, so it, the functional dependence is 1 over uh, t square e to the minus uh, epsilon over kt. So if we plot this uh, molar specific heat as a function of temperature, what would this look like? First of all, as uh, t goes to uh, infinity the molar specific heat is going to zero and as t goes to uh, zero it is also going to zero because the exponential term will dominate so let me check that limit as uh, beta goes to infinity uh, I have e to the minus beta epsilon uh, and I have 1 over t squared here so uh, I need to look at what happens to beta square e to the minus 
uh, beta over epsilon so this is the limit as beta goes to infinity beta squared over e to the beta epsilon and using L'Hopital rule multiple times we have seen that this goes as e to the minus beta epsilon so uh, as t goes to uh, zero beta goes to infinity so it's going to be an exponential decay so we will see that it is decaying to zero exponentially as e to the minus epsilon over kt here and then it will have a maximum and then it will uh, again go to uh, zero uh, as one over t square so uh, this this should be the uh, behavior of uh, molar specific heat although the thermal effects just discussed are small they can become important when making heat capacity measurements at very low temperatures in some substances example in indium metal since the indium 115 nucleus departs appreciably from spherical symmetry so apparently uh, these effects are quite important at low temperatures when measuring the uh, heat capacity of nuclei of some substances <clears throat> now as for the uh, qualitative uh, graph so i have basically obtained this graph from the quantitative uh, result here so we could have plotted e bar as a function of t uh, and we would uh, we can look at the slope of e bar as a function of t to estimate qualitatively how this behaves so that's how it should be done so if we plot e bar as a function of uh, t how would this look like uh, as t goes to uh, zero beta goes to infinity you would see that uh, the exponential term would dominate so it would approach uh, the ground state energy of the system then the ground state energy of the system is zero here so as t goes to zero you would expect that e bar goes to zero and it does uh, it goes to zero exponentially uh, so you would see uh, this behavior uh, where it would go as e to the uh, minus beta epsilon and as t goes to infinity beta goes to zero you can see that it's approaching a constant value here which is 2 na epsilon divided by 3 so it it would approach here 2 na epsilon divided by 3 and once again here we have a change of behavior uh, so there must be a critical temperature somewhere where i have increasing slope and decreasing slope uh, in the e bar versus t graph so that means i have an increasing molar specific heat and decreasing molar specific heat after this uh, critical uh, temperature so how would we estimate this uh, critical uh, temperature uh, because we have two energy levels epsilon and uh, zero you would uh, require to have one third of the molecules uh, in uh, m equals one state one third in m equals minus one and one third in m equals zero state at a uh, very high uh, temperatures uh, so uh, the significant transitions between these uh, two energy levels would occur uh, when delta uh, e matches the thermal energy so uh, we can estimate this ktc to be of the order of uh, delta e the transition uh, between the uh, energy levels which is epsilon so tc must be of the order of epsilon divided by uh, k so when the thermal energy is high enough uh, then we would have uh, significant transitions between m equals zero and m equals one and m equals minus one uh, states corresponding to this behavior